السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذي نصطفى والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا قاتم النبيين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعه إلى يوم الدين وبعد قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول رب لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكن من الصالحين ولن يؤخر الله نفسا إذا جاء أجلها والله خبير بما تعملون وقال تعالى رب ارجعوني رب ارجعوني لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما ترقت كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها صدق الله صدق الله العظيم حميدا ومصليا ومتوكلا على الله وبعد Respected brothers, elders and sisters in Islam We thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us, gracing us, allotting us, providing us this opportunity today on this blessed day of Jumu'ah to come to perform our Salatul Jumu'ah. I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming and may Allah reward us graciously, generously and bountifully in both dunya and in akhirah. In life, we wish, we desire, and we aspire for many things. Isn't that so? In life, we wish, all of us have wishes, all of us have desires, all of us have aspirations. If I should ask the question, what do you wish for and what do you desire for in life? If I should ask the question, we are sitting here, what do we wish for in life? What do we aspire for in life? Everyone's answer here will be different. Why is that so? Because everyone's desires and aspirations and wishes are different. So everyone's answers will be different. For example, the poor will wish to become rich and wealthy. The rich will desire to have more wealth. And to become richer, the sick would desire and wish to become healthy and cured. The student wishes to graduate with degrees and honors. Those who are single, if you ask them, what do you wish and desire? They might tell you, I wish or my desire to get married. Parents who have children, they may tell you that I wish and my desire is for my children to be good children. You ask the religious and the pious, you might hear from them that my wish and my desire is to get closer to Allah. So everyone's wish and desires and aspirations are different. All of these wishes desires and aspirations can probably be achieved in this world. Isn't this so? 
Because these are all, all worldly wishes. They can probably be achieved and acquired. But there are some people, no matter what they wish for, no matter what they desire for, no matter what they aspire for, it will never be fulfilled. Never be fulfilled. Who are those people? Have you ever heard the word Umniyatul Mauta? Umniyatul Mauta? The wishes of the dead? The dead also will have wishes. But no matter what they wish for, it will never be fulfilled. The righteous, the God fearing, the good people, Rasulullah says, when they die, Ida wudi'atil janaza. And when their bodies are being carried on the shoulders of people to the burial place, to the grave. In Kanat Saliha, if that individual was a righteous person, was a good person, Taqul, he says, that disease, that person, he says, Qaddimuni, Qaddimuni. Take me quickly, take me quickly. And when that righteous soul is being taken quickly and then placed in the grave, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that righteous soul is now being shown his place in Jannah from inside of the grave. That righteous soul is what? Is now being shown his place in Jannah from the grave. So then that righteous soul now wishes and desires at that time, Ya Allah, aqim as-sa'a, aqim as-sa'a. Oh Allah, let Qiyamah comes quickly. Let Qiyamah comes quickly. I don't want to stay here longer. I just want to go to my rightful home. I want to go to my rightful home. Then there will be some people who would wish to come back in this world just to do any good deed. Listen to me carefully. There will be certain people who would wish that if they can come back, to do any good deed without specification, any good deed they would want to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws that scenario in the Quran. And Allah says, Rabbirji'uni. They will say, Oh Allah, Oh my Rabb, return me to the dunya. La'alli a'malu amalan salih. I just want to say one subhanallah send me back I don't want to say multiple subhanallah I don't want to say after every salat 33 times anymore <clears throat> just send me back I want to say one subhanallah just one some would want to come back just to pray two raka'at of salah Two raka'at of salah. Not the five daily salah anymore. Not nawafil and tahajjud and qiyamul layl. No, no. Oh Allah, send me back. Just to pray two raka'at of salah. Some will desire and wish to come back just to give one dollar in sadaqah. One dollar in sadaqah. Not to give by the hundreds or by the thousands. Some will wish and desire to come back just to fast for one day. Not the entire month of Ramadan, but just for one day. Some would wish and desire to come back not to recite one page of the Quran, but at least one line. One line of the Quran. 
But what will be the answer from Allah? Kalla. Kalla. Innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. There is no return. There is no coming back. Those wishes and aspirations will have no reality to them. What did Allah say in another place in the Quran? لَوْ أَنَّ لِي كَرَّةً لَوْ أَنَّ لِي كَرَّةً فَأَكُونُ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ If I just had one more chance. What Allah is saying? People will say, only if I had just one. لَوْ أَنَّ لِي كَرَّةً One more chance. What would I do with it? لَأَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ I will be among the best of people. Send me back. Oh Allah. If by chance you told a dead person, you tell a dead person that if you are given a chance to come back to earth, what do you think that person will do? If a person who is already dead, hypothetically, it is not possible, but I'm saying if he is told that you are given back a chance to come back to earth, what do you think that person will come and do? Would he come and build a house? Would he come back to accumulate more money and more wealth? Do you think he would want to come back to finish his education? Do you think he would want to come back to go on a vacation? No, no, wallahi, he would want to come back. Just to say one subhanallah. Rasulullah he said, listen. What the Nabi of Allah said. This should shake us up. What kind of life are we living? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. He passed by a grave with sahaba. And he said to them, oh my sahaba. If this person in this grave. Were given an opportunity to come back. If this person in this grave were given an opportunity to come back and he were to give in this entire world and all that it contains, he is not coming back empty handed, but he is coming back with the entire world. Dunya wa ma fiha. Yeah. He is coming back with the entire world and what it contains. You know what the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa says? He will give that up and choose to come back just to pray two raka'at of salah. Everything else will be nothing to him. The entire world and what it contains will be nothing. What will he want to come back to do? Just to pray two raka'at of salah. Mm. Those of us who miss our salah intentionally on a daily basis, then listen. Before you are being prayed, pray before you are being prayed upon. Pray before you are being prayed upon. Pray your salah now. Make an intention to start praying your salah now because a time will come you will beg, you will beg and wish and desire to come back to earth just to pray two raka'at of salah. Just two raka'at of salah. So don't skip your fajr and wait until you wake up in the morning to pray it. No, pray now. Find a time in the day to pray. Find a time in the day to pray. Another group of people who would wish to come back will be those people who after dying they realized that all their good deeds were multiplied by zero. Hmm. All their good deeds were what? Multiplied by zero. If you multiply something by zero is what? Zero. zero. They would wish, when they would realize that, how would have that been? 
Their deeds were not sincerely done for Allah. They prayed to be seen. They donated to be called generous. They acquired knowledge, whether it be Islamic knowledge, recite Quran, whatever it is to be famous. To be famous. Such people will realize that their deeds were contaminated. Hence, destroyed. Hence, destroyed. They would wish to come back. Just to do what? Just to apply the ayat of the Quran. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنِّي أُمِرُتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصَ اللَّهُ الدِّينَ I was told by Allah to obey Allah khalisa with sincerity ala lillahi ad-din al-khalis ala lillahi ad-din al-khalis so when a person will realize that all that I did I came with mountains of deeds mountains of deeds I came with on the day of qiyamah but they are all haba and mansura. They are not accepted by Allah. They were contaminated with other intentions. May Allah purify our intention when we do something good. Say Ameen. Ameen. Let it be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no other ulterior motive. For they will be destroyed. That's a second category of people. The third category of people, it is said, those who will wish to come back to this world will be those people who die in debt. Those who die in debt. The janazah of a sahabi. Sahabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about sahaba, Kullan wa'adallahu al-husna. Kullan. Every one of them without exception. Will go to Jannah. Allah promised them Jannah. The Sahabi, he passed away. And his janazah was brought in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be performed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before performing the janazah, he asked the question Does he owe any debt? Does he owe any debt? Sahaba replied, Ya Rasulullah, just two dinars. How many? Not much. Just two dinars he owed. That's his debt. Two dinars. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam excused himself from performing the janazah. He excused himself and he said, Sallu ala sahibikum. You go ahead and pray on your brother. Everyone wants Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to pray for them, to make dua of rahmah and maghfirah for them at the time of janazah. Everyone wants that. So Abu Qatada radiallahu anhu, one sahabi, he was there and he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have taken the responsibility to take care of this man's debt. I will take care of his two dinars debt that he owed. Ya Rasulullah, go ahead and pray his janazah. Do not deprive him of your dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Okay, are you taking the guarantee? He said, Yes. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on and he performed the janazah. He what? He performed the janazah. The very next day, the very next day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Aba Qatada, did you take care of the debt? Very next day, did you take care of the debt? Abu Qatada radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, it has just been a day. I didn't make arrangements yet to take care of it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Make haste and take care of it as early as possible. These were the words of the Nabi of Allah. Be quick, take care of it as early as possible. The next day now, Rasulullah sallallahu said, Ya Abu Qatada, did you take care of the debt? Abu Qatada said, Ya Rasulullah, yes. I took care of him. Hear what the Nabi of Allah said now. Hear what he said. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Now his body has become cool. 
What did the Nabi of Allah said? Now, now that you have taken care of his debt now, now his body, the body of a Sahabi, now his body has become cool. What does that mean? Before that, what was happening to him? Two dinars. Not by the hundreds or by the thousands. Two dinars. What we put ourselves in. When can we go? We don't know. A young man, we read the janazah for him, choosed it. He was going, driving on the road, 22 years of age. Accident. Did he have a chance to do anything? To offset his debts or do any other thing? Never had a chance. Never had a chance. So, the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen to what the, the Rasulullah used to make this dua again and again. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ma'thami wal-maghram. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ma'thami wal-maghram. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from all kinds of sins. Ma'tham, sins. And from all kinds of debts. Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, we hear you making this dua constantly and again and again. Why do you make this dua so much? Why do you make this dua so much? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when a person is in debt, when he speaks, he lies. And when he promises, he breaks his promise. This is what the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So, debt in Islam is allowed. The Prophet, the Nabi of Allah took debt. It is allowed. But with the intention of getting it paid back. So such a person, when he will see, when he will see what Allah will do, even in Qaba, he will wish to come back. He would wish to come back and let me undo what I did not do. Um, what are we talking about? Umniyatul Mauta. The wishes of the dead, what they will want to do. Another person who will wish to come back will be an unjust person. Unjust. A person who was unjust to his children, to his spouse, to his employees, to his workers. When he will see the punishment that would be given to an unjust person, he would wish to come back. You know to do what? Just to ask for forgiveness. Allah, send me back. Those who I was unjust to, send me back. I want to tell them sorry. I want to ask them for forgiveness. If you are unjust to a person, and that person, listen to this carefully. Wow. You are unjust to anyone. And that person looks at you and tells you, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil fika. Hasbun Allah. The file between you and him now is lifted from the court of this world into the court of Allah. Is lifted from dunya, gone into the court of Allah, the court of Ahkamul Hakimin. Allah now takes it in his hand. Allah takes it in his hand. And Allah says, La ansurannaka walaw ba'dahin. I will surely give you your rights back, even though it may be after some time. So if you have defamed anyone, or you have accused anyone of anything, then make sure that you ask for forgiveness now before you die, before this life come to an end. Another category of people who would wish and desire to come back will be that person, you know, who, who severed ties of kinship. Who severed ties of kinship with family members? Have you ever heard of someone who prays five times a day, who fasts maybe on a weekly basis and in Ramadan, who goes for Hajj and Umrah and yet Allah curses him? Have you ever heard of that? Somebody is very religious. Prays five times salah, fast, hajj, umrah, all the, but yet Allah curses him. Have you ever heard of anybody like that? Yes, there is a person like that. Allah says that in the Quran, 
So in Surah Muhammad, Allah says, وَتَقَتِّعُوا أَرْحَامَهُمْ وَتَقَتِّعُوا أَرْحَامَهُمْ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَعْنَهُمُ اللَّهُ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَعْنَهُمُ اللَّهُ Yeah. You know, last night was Thursday night, wasn't it? Thursday night, all of our deeds of the week were shown to Allah. My deeds and your deeds that we did for the whole week, from Monday, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, Mondays and Thursdays, our deeds are shown to Allah weekly. That's why it's recommended to fast in these days. So last night, all of us sitting here, our deeds were shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we were rewarded accordingly. But there were two people who were put on hold. Two people who were put on hold because of issues between them. Because of issues between them, family members. What was said to them last night and all the other nights. Anzirhuma hatta yastaliha. Anzirhuma. What? Put the rewards of their deeds on hold. Can you imagine that? Put the rewards of their deeds on hold until they reconcile with each other. Wow. Some who may be here for 10 years, for 15 years, your Hajj, your Umrah, your Salah, your fasting, your Quran, your Sadaqah, your everything, the rewards of that were put on hold because you did not speak to a family member. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Because you did not speak to a family member for the past years of your life, the rewards of all your deeds are put on hold. They are put on hold. So when this person who sever ties will be placed in the grave and he will see the danger and the punishment of severing ties, he would wish to come back. And not only to hug and say sorry and to make things okay with relatives, he would be ready now to even go to kiss their feet. If you, if you tell somebody now, you have dispute between two people, brother, go and hug your other brother, two family members. No, I'm not going to do that. I will hold this against him until I die. Family member, when they will see that, in Qabr and they would wish to come back, they would not want to only hug, they would even want to go to lower and kiss the feet. Umniyatul Mauta. That's the wishes of the dead. So slaughter this ego, pick up the phone and make the call. One category of people who would wish to come back will be those people who had the wrong friends. These are all ayat of Quran. They had the wrong friends and they associated with the wrong company. You had the wrong friends, brother. You didn't surround yourself with the good people. Huh? They would say, oh Allah, I wish if I had never made these people my friends. I wish they were not in my company or I was not in their company. Because these people influenced me to disobey you, oh Allah. Oh Allah, send me back. I only wish to come back to have the, 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 the real friends now so that who will, who will influence me to obey you? Who will influence me to, who will encourage me to obey you? Why? Because today, because of them, we are now regretting in our qabr. So teenagers, choose your friends. فَلْيَنْذُرْ إِلَى مَنْ يُخَالِلْ What the Nabi of Allah says? فَلْيَنْذُرْ Be careful who you choose as friends. فَلْيَنْذُرْ إِلَى مَنْ يُخَالِلْ Have the good company. Don't associate with people who will encourage you to do wrong. Associate yourself with people who will give you the right advice and encourage you to do good. Another group of people who will, come, who will wish to come back will be those people whom Allah has given wealth. Yeah. Allah has blessed you. But you did not spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they will see the great rewards. 
Quran is full with this. Quran is full with this. When they will see the great rewards given and the punishment for not given, they will say, What will they say? وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ فَيَقُولْ رَبِّي لَوْلَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ Oh Allah, send me back. I just wish to come back. إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ For a little bit time. Not a whole lifespan anymore. أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ What do I want to do when I come back? If I do come back. فَأَصَدَّقَ Allah says, I will give everything now. I did not give earlier when I was told to. I will give everything. وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And I will be the best. What Allah says in the Quran. Wow, Allah says, رَبَّنَا أَبْصَرْنَا وَسَمِعْنَا فَرْجِعْنَا نَعْمَلْ صَالِحَا إِنَّ مُقِنُونَ What will people say? Ya Allah, Abusarna, we have now seen what reality is about. We were in a different world. We, we, we have seen the world of reality. Now we know. So send us back. Abusarna, wasamirna, we have now heard and we have seen. Farjina, what do we want to do? Na'amal saliha, we want to do good deeds. Inna muqinun. Now we believe. Now we believe. You know the idea of spending and giving from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you is actually the idea of transferring. You know, I make it so easy. The idea of that is like transferring uh, funds from our worldly account to our akhirah account. What is the idea of that? Spending for the sake of Allah. The idea of that is like what? Spending from our worldly account, transferring actually, from our worldly account to our akhirah account. What, what are we doing? Huh? It still remains our account. <coughs> Isn't still our account? We have a dunya account and we have an akhirah account. So what are we doing? We are just transferring, but it's still mine. It still remains mine, right? Just a different bank. From Wells Fargo and from Chase to the Bank of Allah. Just the bank are different, but the account remains the same. But this can only happen if we understand two things. If we understand two things. One, ma naqasat manu min sadaqa. That when we give, Allah does not decrease what we have given. And what is left behind, Allah will not, Allah will not decrease that. Allah will replace it with better. So if you want a promotion in life, give sadaqa. If someone is sick in your family, give sadaqah, you know. And the second, when you are going to give, don't think you are giving in a cause, whatever cause it is, helping the masjid or helping the orphan or whatever cause people, you know, ask you to give in. Don't think you are giving in a cause, but think you are giving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha used to do when she would give? Let me tell you. She was very generous, Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha. You know what, what she would do when she would give? When she would give sadaqah, she would put perfume in it. What she would do? She would put perfume in it and she would be asked, why do you do that? She said, because I am giving it to Allah. I'm not giving it to any cause. I'm giving it to Allah. Even when I give it to a cause, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receives it. So I'm giving it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will conclude with this last hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, La a'lamanna aqwaman min ummati. La a'lamanna aqwaman min ummati. I know of people from my ummah. Ya'atuna yawm al They will come on the day of qiyama bi hasanatin amthal jibal tihama bayda. Their deeds will be so much like the mountains. Mountains, their deeds will be. But Allah says, We will make it like, we will make their, the, the, the deeds disappear like husks of rice. Have you ever seen the husk of rice? The outside when a rice is being, what do you call it? Um, 
process the husks. They will come with so much good deeds, but Allah says, will make it like that. They will just blow away in the air. Blow away in the air. They will disappear. So the companions of the Prophet wasallam, they ask, Oh Allah, O oh Prophet of Allah, describe these people to us. Who will be such people? Will come with so many deeds on the day of Qiyamah like that of mountains. But then it will be just gone. Rasulullah says, Ama innahum min ikhwanikum. Let me tell you, they are from your own brothers. They are from your own brothers. Wa min jildikum. And they are from your own tribesmen. They are from amongst you. And they're not ordinary people. Ya'khudhuna min al-layl kama ta'khudhun. They pray qiyamul layl just as how you pray qiyamul layl. Yeah. They do the same. But what would be their problem? What would have been their problem? Innahum qawmun. Iza khalaw. Iza khalaw bimaharimillah. In tahakuha. إِذَا خَلَوْ بِمَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ انْتَهَكُوهَا Their problem will be there are such people that when they are in seclusion by themselves they transgress against the limits and laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they are alone in the room and there is a TV in front of them or a laptop or a computer or a cell phone they use it for the wrong reasons and transgress against the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are afraid when someone will see us, but we are not afraid that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always looking at us. Such people, when they will see this in the, day of, in the qabr, they will wish to come back. Oh Allah, send me back to undo this. Send me back so I can undo this. So what I said in the beginning, we all have aspirations, we all have desires, we all have wishes that can be fulfilled here. But there are certain wishes and desires that can never be fulfilled no matter what. Who are those? Amniyatul mawta, the, the wishes of the dead people will not be fulfilled. So let's fulfill those wishes now, before that time comes. Before that time comes and we would not be able to do it. Allah give us time, Allah give us opportunity, each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. Let's do what is needed to be done. You know, I received a clip today. This is something to, to conclude with. Many of you probably must have seen it also. There was a sheikh by the name of Abu Khattab from Kuwait. A sheikh by the name of Abu Khattab from Kuwait. He passed away last night while giving a lecture on the rights of husbands and wives and mothers and children. He was talking and while he was talking, he just draw a breath and the last thing he said was La ilaha illallah. That was his last word in the lecture. Maybe the, the clip is circulating, you can see it. Yeah. The last thing he said was La ilaha illallah. Do you think this sheikh would wish to come back? Nah, he already got what he wanted. Why? Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man kana akhiru kalamihi la ilaha illallah dakhala al-jannah. Anyone whose last word is la ilaha illallah, he goes to jannah. He goes to jannah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of our last word la ilaha illallah inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill all of our desires and wishes and aspirations before it is too late and we wouldn't be able to do it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and forgive us.